right, so this is going to be our lesson on um, fermentation. So you want to be on page 34 in your packet. So first, before we start the lesson, I want to start off with a little true or false warm-up. So I'm going to ask you here to pause the video and read each statement, decide whether you think it's true or false, and then once you've done that, come back on and we'll check it. All right, so let's take a look and see what you thought. Number one, glycolysis is a process used by all organisms. That is true. Remember, that's evidence of common ancestry before, between all of life on Earth. Number two, glycolysis requires oxygen in order to occur. That is false. That is why every organism, regardless of if they have oxygen available or not, can perform glycolysis to break down glucose. Number three, during cellular respiration, glucose is reduced and oxygen is oxidized. That is false. That's actually the opposite, right? Glucose is oxidized and oxygen is reduced. Number four, NADH and FADH2 directly add a phosphate onto ADP to make ATP. That is false. Their job is just to simply carry electrons to the electron transport chain, which ultimately results in a gradient of hydrogen ions, which ultimately provides the energy then to make ADP into ATP. But they do not directly add that phosphate group. And number five, only heterotrophs use cellular respiration. That is false. All organisms use cell respiration, and not only heterotrophs. All right, so let's say we don't have oxygen available. How can a cell still continue to make ATP in order to get the energy it needs to survive? And so that's where we're going to see fermentation happen. So in our cells, this can happen. And also in the cells of organisms, like certain prokaryotes, that live in environments where there simply is no oxygen. So what happens after glycolysis is what we're talking about here, okay? So in the absence of oxygen, we start with glycolysis, just as we've learned it. And remember, glycolysis generates 2-ATP, which isn't much, but it's something. And glycolysis also produces NADH, right? So we can see a summary here uh, showing glycolysis. Okay, there's our summary. Um, and so what happens after that, right? We know that in order for glycolysis to continue to occur, we've talked about how it needs a supply of NAD plus to come back to pick up those electrons to form NADH again. So if we don't have the electron transport chain and we're not making that NAD plus again, then where do we get it? Otherwise, glycolysis would just shut down. So this is what happens. So there's two types of fermentation, which is what's going to happen after glycolysis if no um, oxygen is available. So there's alcoholic and there's lactic acid fermentation. So first I'm going to look at alcoholic fermentation. So alcoholic fermentation, this is going to be used by yeast, for example, that's used in the production of alcoholic products. Um, and some bacteria can use this too. So what happens is we have pyruvate at the end of glycolysis. Pyruvate is then converted into, in a couple steps, into ethanol, which is an alcohol, okay? Um, in the process, CO2, as we convert that pyruvate to ethanol, CO2 is given off as a waste product, okay? That is also why if you've ever baked bread before and you add yeast to it, the yeast are actually doing alcoholic fermentation. And that's why your dough is able to rise. They're producing CO2 bubbles. Um, now, when we make bread, bread is not alcoholic. So in the cooking process, we cook off that alcohol. But the CO2 is responsible for the rising. So let's take a look at what's happening down here. So notice that in order to convert pyruvate to ethanol, we need NADH, okay? So what happens is when we use that NADH, we're now able to regenerate NAD plus so that glycolysis can continue. And this is a big concept that I want you to understand because I know that this would be a question on a test. So in order for glycolysis to continue to occur, which is this, the process that actually makes the ATP in a cell that's, that's um, deprived of oxygen, we have to use this step down here so that we can regenerate that NAD+. That's really the goal of it. So lactic acid fermentation is quite similar, um, except there's, here's some of the differences. Uh, one, we don't make CO2, okay, um, in that conversion. And two, the end product is lactic acid or lactate, 
okay? But still, take a look what's happening here. That conversion requires NADH. So we're regenerating NAD+, which can go back to glycolysis. So glycolysis can continue to happen. Again, still only producing two ATP. So really inefficient, but it's energy. Some energy is better than none, okay? So organisms that are going to use lactic acid, um, you know, so this is used by certain microorganisms in the production of, in your notes I have yogurt and sauerkraut, um, but also this happens in our cells when we're deprived of oxygen um, in our muscle cells. So let's say we're working out really hard and we're using up the oxygen in cell respiration just too quickly. So what will happen is our muscle cells are going to produce lactic acid. Now this is thought to be one of the causes of muscle soreness um, when we work out. It's thought to be uh, related to that lactic acid buildup, but there are some differing opinions on that.